Greetings, I'm Jonathan, Polygon Flow's Community Director. Today, I'm covering Decal Scattering, one of the many incredible tools available in Polygon Flow's Dash, our next gen Unreal Engine plugin. If you want to create environments featuring heavy use of decals to break up repetition, this video is for you. I'll start by opening Dash, then move it out of the Unreal viewport. Select the content library and find a decal that you'd like to work with. Decals can be selected and dragged directly into the world. Dash will automatically align the decal to the surface of any object. You can also adjust how the decal is rotated, scaled, and placed at any point prior to hitting Enter. The little quick tip menu covers all aspects of the placement tool. Feel free to pause and you can read all of the options available. The decal placement in Dash is super robust, making it very easy to place decals precisely. But what if you want to scatter those decals instead? That is where Dash really shines. Using the content browser, hold Shift and select multiple decals. Then hold Control and drag those decals into the world. Then select Scatter Here and watch the magic unfold. There's a wide array of options to work with in Decal Scatter, so I'll go over all of them to help clarify what each tool does. Starting with Density, which controls how many decals will spawn. Maximum count controls the absolute number of decals that can spawn. With spin enabled, decals spawn with random rotation. Disable it and they'll all point in the same direction. You can control that direction with uniform angle. Rotation jitter can let you precisely adjust randomized rotation values. Moving on to scale properties, scale determines the overall general scale value applied to all decals. Depth controls the size of the decal's projection box. Min and max scale control the overall scale of the decals within the confines of the scale value that you've previously set. Object masking requires an object, so I'll use Unreal to create a basic mesh to work with for demonstrating the masking tool. With the sphere placed, I can then add it to the list of objects to mask with. This causes decal scatter to place decals only within the specified distance parameter. You can get quite a few different decal placement effects using the object masking system, so play around with it until you get the look that you're going for. You can also invert the distance as well, making the decals spawn away from the meshes used for scattering instead of within a specified range of them. You can also enable Keep Inside on a mesh with a transparent material to function as a bounding box for all of your decals, allowing you precise control over exactly where they'll spawn. Now, let's demonstrate how feature masking works with decals on curved surfaces. You can use min and max height on flat surfaces, but slope mask requires a curved surface. So for this to be demonstrated properly, I'm going to make a quick set of scattered decals using the same input decals that I provided for the flat wall surface earlier. Once I'm happy with the way these decals are laid out, for the purpose of demonstrating feature masking, I'll go ahead and start adjusting settings. Slope mask is pretty self-explanatory. It works based on the slope of the object being projected upon. Minimum and maximum height masking both determine exactly where decals will spawn within the scattered object's bounding radius. But these are all basic spheres that have been flattened a bit. So how do these settings hold up when you adjust the scatter surfaces? Not only does Dash adjust decal placement in real time, it also adjusts how it works with the objects used to scatter decals even if you change their location or adjust their scale and rotation. This versatility extends to other aspects of Dash too, not just the decal scattering system. This should give you a great idea of how Dash can work with your own projects. If you're curious about Dash and want to learn more, Join us on our Discord server, which is linked in the description below, and leave a comment and let us know what you think here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, I'm Jonathan, Community Director, and this has been another quick guide to using Dash and Unreal Engine. See you next time.